machine. I will cut you down, break you apart, display the gore of your profane form across the stars. I will grind you down into the very sparks, cry for mercy. My hand shall relish ending you here and now. The barracks is the very first spawner tower in TDX and is definitely one of the most fun troops to use. Being able to sit back and relax while the troops inside of these small crappy homeless shelter tents that eventually turn into government owned warehouses charge aimlessly into battle. The top path offers scouts with hidden detection and the railgunner's long lost brother, while the bottom path sends in everything. Who needs hidden detection when you can just brute force it and tank all the incoming zombies? The barracks can hold their own weight in every single mode and is also a very reliable support tower in general to have on your loadout. Hell, someone even made a coin slash exp strategy surrounding the thing. But can it beat expert by itself? No. But with a little bit of help, it totally can. Like any other challenge I've made, we first gotta pick which map we'll be doing this challenge on. Obviously, the first map that came to mind was Ancient Sky Island. The barracks was so good at its job that it underwent several nerfs, not only to itself, but the entire game as a whole. Losing its placement from 4 to 3, causing the Kalanoids map to be vaulted for a short period of time, and even pioneering the creation of simple maps. History lesson aside, me, Eternal, Hoovy, and Silly all put down our barracks at the start of the game to take care of the early waves. While we did have farms, we thought it would be more wise if we all had just done early, just in case we need to tank any hidden zombies. Our main goal for our first attempt in this challenge is to map out the early game and see what we need to change or adjust, such as maybe someone switches up what they do or even switch out a person entirely. Another one of our goals were to figure out how far the barracks can actually take us before introducing more support towers, since we didn't want to stray too far away from the whole barracks only. With the entire team's full support, you can imagine that the barracks easily cleared the first couple of waves, only sending out the various different zombie pluses and a couple of stealthy little dudes that we ended up just tanking. Wave 7 was the first wave that showed a bit of struggle. Not having armor pierce, the scouts couldn't deal damage at range and had to resort to body blocking them which destroyed the blob buildup. This pattern would then repeat again on the next wave where we couldn't see the stealthed mutated zombie and had to sit there and watch it eat through our scouts. This paved the way for the revive boss to get really far into the map and almost killing us. But we couldn't rest just yet since immediately after a resurrected armored ranger quickly ran towards our base ending our run on wave 8. With not nearly enough scouts to deal the damage nor enough mass to tank it, we ran into our first roadblock. So we tried the same thing again, hoping we'd find better luck with blobbing up the scouts more or even getting a better upgrade, but still failed nonetheless. Our solution must be to give the barracks more time to spawn more scouts, to tank the stealth of zombies, so we decided to switch maps to Moon Outpost, since it is much longer than Sky Island and takes on the same traits as Kawanoids, being able to blob up on two sides. Our early game was very similar to our previous attempts, the only difference being we got the first top path upgrade. Since the turn on calculated, that was the most cost effective upgrade, freaking nerd. This map worked super effectively, just as we thought, and even drove back the zombies all the way back to their home. A few waves later, we returned to the wave we struggled on, but to our surprise, we did much better and even had leftover scouts to spare for the next wave, so much so that we were able to tank the ranger. But then came the ultimate wave check for early game. Wave 10, that drops a knight with 1300 HP and a grenadier that constantly lobs more and more zombies to the front lines. They push us back further and further, losing our numbers all while the time ticks closer and closer to the next wave. We barely managed to kill the knight, but it was already too late. The damage was done and the stealthed mutated zombies sneaked by. Maybe if we were a tiny bit faster in killing the knight, we would have been able to accumulate more scouts for the next wave of stealthed zombies. But there were simply too many. Even if we did somehow push them back to their spawn, there was no way we could take them all. So we all agreed that something in the early game had to change. Eternal mentions bringing in the Cryo Ranger. I thought it sounded pretty silly since nobody really uses Cryo Ranger. 
but it has everything we needed for early game. Its first couple of upgrades were extremely cheap and could even see hiddens. That's even without mentioning its freezing capabilities. Eternal places his cryo right off rip and slowly upgrades it to 3-2, which I mean goes straight to work. Waves 8 and 9 were so free, I mean just look at this, free my mans. Anyway, when wave 10 came around, Eternal and I set the cryo to strongest to single out the grenadier, giving the scouts an easier time taking out the knight. The following wave was significantly easier, completely freezing the mutated zombies one by one long enough for the scouts to ram into them. Finally overcoming the early game, everything from there on out was smooth sailing. Hoovy and Ghost focused on getting the top path barracks, while Eternal and I did the opposite. Once the barracks passed the threshold of the third tier upgrade, they were practically unstoppable. So many waves passed by with relative ease, with the Mosa Trooper being the main MVP, taking out all the large clumps of zombies, while the Spec Ops blobbed up and did massive DPS, even to bullet resistant enemies. Our little victory chain came to a sudden halt on wave 19, where the elite grenadier appears. We attempted to target and freeze it, but it slipped past our grasp. Little interesting fact, the shockers can actually stun the scouts, which really screwed us over and allowed the grenadier to keep spawning stealth and revive titans, ending our run on wave 20. Knowing how to consistently get past wave 10, we easily got back to where we were and this time around actually prepared for wave 19 by getting more cryo rangers and targeting the grenadier. Just like any other wave check, everything after that wave was pretty easy, getting the rider and railgunner upgrades along the way, slowly getting our barracks to max, only stomping around wave 24 when we didn't learn from our mistakes and letting the grenadiers live longer than they should have, allowing the armored runners on the next wave to get really far, scot-free, without taking any damage. But to our surprise, the sheer mass of the barracks troops all clumped up tanked all three of them, so back to not worrying about anything and maxing out our towers. At this point, more than half of us had at least one or two max towers, and that was more than enough to take care of the rest of the mid-game waves. With the troops finally almost reaching their full potential, they all started clumping up and pumping out massive damage. We didn't even have to micro the cryo rangers anymore, since everything the grenadier spawns died in an instant anyway. Then came wave 30, which in our eyes wasn't that big of a deal, since we could just spam a billion cannon fodder towers without a worry in the world since we weren't really saving for anything. The buildup of rail gunners were absolutely decimating everything, including the Predator's HP. Wave 31 brings out the zombies with resistance to almost everything that also gives no cash, but wasn't an issue since we had flamethrowers which had infinite pierce and dealt damage to everything regardless. At this point, we also decided to start setting up the cryo blasters. You might be wondering, Remy, why are you spamming so many cryo blasters in the front? While I skim through these next few waves, let me explain. That's because of recently, a few YouTubers have actually proven that you can still indeed freeze the Eradicator. We knew there was no way that we could possibly kill the Eradicator alone with just barracks and a few supports. Since he would just walk out of their range or trample over a few of them, heal himself, there were just too many factors taken into account that didn't allow us to kill him within a certain time frame. But we are still technically killing him with the brute force of the barracks, so back to the video. There was absolutely nothing that could stop us now. Everything that was thrown at us thus far has either been frozen solid and awaited their demise or has already perished by the hands of the hundreds of soldiers. The only real issue we could think of was that there were too many zombies at the front who just stood there like an overcrowded jail. Which I guess wasn't really a bad thing after all since it would give more time for the troops to blob up but... <clears throat> like I was saying, there was absolutely nothing that could stop us now. It was only a slight error since there was too many zombies from the previous wave. Duh. But even then, the same problem repeated and lost to the stupidly fast stealthed armored runners. The issue seemed to be that we didn't have enough DPS output. So we all decided to collectively get top path barracks to have as many rail gunners on the field at once and bring along good old buddy Papel. But then that failed horribly, dying to a bunch of cloned smashers. So we were like, okay, let's just do the opposite of that and spam a bunch of bottom path barracks. Whoop, that didn't work either. Although the map was good for looping and letting the troops blob up, there simply wasn't enough time for that to occur. So we would have a limited amount of soldiers on the track at a time. 
Suddenly, a glimmer of hope sparkled in our eyes. The answers were staring at us right in the face. The key to all of our problems- Yep, you guessed it. It's the same old map we used in the beginning. The whole reason we switched from Sky Island to Moon Outpost was because we didn't know what the hell we were doing. But with Cryo Ranger in our loadouts and Propel's Super Pro experience, we did really well on our first try. You thought the blob buildup on Moon Outpost was crazy? Check this out. We even managed to get to wave 30 and absolutely destroy the predators. The waves after were also super easy since the troops could shoot the zombies from afar without worrying about dying. Then came the wave we got demolished on. The smashers and the massive horde they were leading were slowly making their way around. It was looking really close with the shocker stunning the troops on the front lines pushing even deeper into our base. But as the smoke cleared it seemed like we actually won and finally conquered wave 35. Wave 36 came swiftly after and gave us a real scare, running really far into the map, but it wasn't anything the group of railgunners couldn't handle. Wave 37 was pretty free, but the wave after gave us a small reality check, annihilating most of our built up railgunners. Then came wave 39, the so called calm before the storm, only spamming a bunch of toxic waste with a handful of multipliers. This wave was never really a problem for any of our runs, so we just went around preparing for the eradicator's arrival when we noticed that they were getting a bit too far. Like really far, like too close for comfort. It looked like, wait, were, were we about to lose? There was absolutely no way that we ended our run on wave 39, only a single wave before the final boss. So we decided to add one more support to the mix, only used for that specific wave, and that was the Toxinator. Its ability to stack its AoE damage was the small simple solution we needed to finally battle the Eradicator. It was game time. We had all the Cryo Blasters and EDJ set up to freeze him. Moment of truth, he didn't freeze. We didn't have nearly enough Cryo Blasters that we needed. As I slumped back in my chair, a glimmer of light hits the corner of my eye. It wasn't hope, but, but rather $270,000. Wait, th this can't be right. Everyone used up all of our money for this final fu- Oh wait, it's Papel. This man had hundreds of thousands of dollars in his pocket as he watched us die. Papel is the type of man to die rich rather than live poor. He fears the IRS. Taking a closer look at his loadout, he didn't even bring Cryo Blaster. So after a small pep talk- No, 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 we got back to work and finally put Papel to good use. With everyone's help, <clears throat> Papel, we finally froze the bastard and watched in awe as the Eradicator helplessly stood there getting obliterated by the soldiers. Kinda anticlimactic now that I think about it. Anyway, thank you so much for watching to the end and your astonishing support on my last couple of videos. Join my Discord for editing streams and leaks on upcoming videos, plus more. Until next time, Saldar. So